Nate, why do we call it C? C, I thought it was because it was short for command line assistant. And we were trying to keep it really like concise so that people didn't have to remember some crazy command. No, C is the symbol for the speed of light. So we originally started working on this program as part of an initiative inside of Red Hat called Lightspeed, which is where we use AI to augment things. And if you're familiar with the Einstein equation for energy e equals MC squared, where C is the constant of light speed, and this is part of the light speed initiative. So they chose the constant of light speed, right? Yeah. So, shout out to news that's it. Super nerdy. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. So here's what- If anyone had questions that we missed in the chat, if you throw them into the chat again, I will try to make sure we get them after Scott's demo. Um, so make me a script to add a user. I want to pass the username as an argument, set their password to a random value that I'll log in a file and set the user's password to be required to change on first login, right? So I'm asking it to do some user managery scripty things. Let's see what comes back out the other side. And it'll do a pretty good job of hitting all of these component asks, but not only does it, or not always does it choose the best way to solve it. So for example, I said, make a random password. So here's what it chose to make a random password. Yeah, man. Nate, <laughs> when you get your first password for your administrator, and it looks like this. You're going to love typing that thing in, right? That's, that's an awesome random password. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, the other thing that it did that I found interesting in this it, it actually just like put it random file like this doesn't exist on my machine in an Path earlier password.log yeah yeah it actually put it in temp uh which i was like no we should not put password information in a world writable temporary because directory. everybody can read and write temp that's a great place for it well it learned now it's putting it in a directory that doesn't exist so you have to figure it out <laughs> yeah so those are the two things that like I saw right off the bat, right? But realize again, as we talked about it, as we transitioned here, right? Notice that it's got this error handling to make sure that the username was passed as an argument. It did the things I told it to do, right? It made a random password. It put it in there. It down here at the bottom used change to make it so that the person, when they logged in, they would be forced to change their password. So like it did the things but it can do better. So yeah. let's, uh, let's change our query a little bit here. Uh, and actually let me clear. All right. So I'm going to add a couple of additional customizations. One is I'm going to say, set their password to a random eight character value. And we can argue whether okay. eight characters is the right number or 20 characters. I don't care. But like you can put the number in there and it will honor, honor the number. The other thing is log to a file. Let's say log to a file in my home. All right. So how do we do? All right, so here we go. Put it in my home directory. Cool. It changed the eight character random password. Okay, good. And then, yeah, everything else looks pretty good. So a couple of things that I've seen it do, it has done things like here it used translate and dev you random to create characters or, or passwords. We could use... It, it, I've seen it sometimes. In fact, in the previous one, it used hex. So let me pull that one up again. So when it uses OpenSSL hex, it's only making a password that includes hexadecimal values, which run between zero and F. Right. So there's not a lot of variation there. There's not like uppercase characters. They're not specials. And so you might want to tell it something like using MK password to make okay. a password 
has like specific yeah. things that you need yeah. in the password. But I mean, when, if you're like, if it's sufficiently complex, right? And if you're making the user change it on the first login anyway, then, you know, it's a pretty small window that somebody may be trying to brute force the thing. Well, and they'd have to know also that it's how long it is and that it's right. only have to really get an advantage on trying to brute force a thing. Right. So if somebody found your script, then they'd be able to use that to seed their random password generator for but their if we were, uh, brute force if, attempts. It didn't use hex. We could use things like base 64 encoding, right? Yeah. To tell it what algorithm to use when using it. Or like I said, we could use MK password with these options to tell right. it that this is the complexity of password I want. So there's, right. again, if we put more things in the prompt that are more specific, it does a better job at making the output. Um, the last one I'm going to do is I'm going to add on another thing I thought about. I was like, oh, this would be kind of nice. Um, how about this? All right, whenever I try to do command line options, I always have to like look it up. How do I do command line options here? Right. And so here we go. Let's see what we get. So notice in the resulting um, script here. There we go. If admin. And then also if the argument isn't provided, it gives me the usage diagram, which now includes the admin flag that I asked for. Look at that. Here it converted back to hex. So I could add in like base 64 to make it a little bit more complex or something else to make it more complex. Right. Um, but the real judge is down here, right? So earlier on, it said if the dash dash admin flag was used, then we wanted to add them, right? So it actually set an environment variable called admin and then says, if that's set, then, you know, go ahead and add them to the wheel group, right? And for those of you who are unfamiliar, by being a member of the wheel group, you are given a root equivalents in the default sudoers file that comes with RHEL. So, right. There you go. That's why I wanted to add them to the wheel group. But yeah, like pretty solid. How long did it take me to write this script? Well, I mean, you, yeah. So, right. How long did it take you to craft that prompt <laughs> is my question. <laughs> so I would say we're going back and forth for maybe like 10 minutes, but I included all the discussion, yeah. so actual like, clicky clacking on the keyboard and making some changes less than five minutes. Yeah. Now I have like a reasonably nice script that I can build off of if I want, or I could add right. a couple of things, like the admin option to have it rewrite it. Cause I hadn't started using it for my task yet. Cool. All right. The, and then I, there were... I think the prompt needs more personality though. Oh, you do. How... Okay, fine. Uh, I'll add in pirate voice. Is it going to make the script I... in pirate voice? Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Ahoy there, there matey. <laughs> Here be the script that'll do as you ask. <laughs> Yeah, for the There's viewer. background story here. <laughs> That's history. About a year and a half ago, I was asked to make a demo of what it would look like if Rail had some AI something in it. And I wrote a proof of concept that was implemented in Shell where I asked it to do different things and it completed and sent out answers. And then just as like to be quirky, I said, and do it as a pirate. And so it output the thing in pirate voice, just like you saw here. So this demo was done in front of the worldwide sales team at Red Hat. It was probably about 5,000 people. And when they started doing pirate stuff, it was crazy town. Yeah. Crazy town. Everybody went crazy. Um, and so that, that completely fake proof of concept inspired 
a bunch of work at Red Hat and some very talented engineers to actually do this work that we're using today. Right. And I was so excited to see that they had also supported Pirate Voice, like my original. <laughs> yeah. That's an important thing. It's an important thing to have in uh, in your AI. It has to have some personality or Pirate yeah. Voice at the very least. <laughs> well, somebody else in chat asked about feelings. We haven't gotten to the Blade Runner style yet where it's like you see yeah. in the desert. We haven't gotten to that yet. And in fact, yeah. if you ask how it feels, it, it says it has no feelings. Right. Um, all right, I'm trying to find this other script. 